start talking a little bit about um, the Mexican cross-border process. So we're going to talk about the easier of the two sides first. And the easier two sides is the northbound process, or which would be the export from Mexico and the import into the United States. Um, this process is just a little bit simpler. Um, probably everybody on this call is a little bit more familiar with that process and kind of some of the rules and regulations, especially once we get into the U.S. side. But we're going to kind of walk you through this process. Um, the, the screen you see here, if after this, if any of you would like some of these, we do have some of these printed out as well. Um, you can send a note in and we can try to get some of these sent out to you as well. Um, so obviously in the northbound process, um, there's a few points to note before we, before we kind of talk about this. One is the fact that um, it is not uncommon to have three power units touch your cargo as it's trying to come northbound or southbound across the Mexican border. So that's why you see some of these steps. They may not make total sense, but if you keep that in the back of your mind the entire time, um, it'll kind of let the rest of this information, you'll see how it fits in that process. Um, power unit one, let's say from Mexico City up to Nuevo Laredo. Power unit two, moving the cargo from Nuevo Laredo to the Laredo side. Um, you'll hear them often called as a drayage company. Uh, power unit three, taking your cargo from a yard in Laredo to final destination somewhere in the United States. So with that, on the northbound side, obviously the documentation process is very much the same as it is for any other import. The supplier needs to provide commercial invoice, packing list, if there's any uh, PGAs. Um, is the item qualified for NAFTA? Obviously, NAFTA is big in the news right now. Um, we can maybe talk about that a little bit later. Um, so, but from a documentation standpoint, really nothing different, right? Um, a couple of different pieces even here though, as that cargo is en route to the um, Nuevo Laredo port or, or any Mexican border town is that um, Mexico requires an actual export entry or an export pedimento. It's similar for those of you who export out of the United States to the AES filing, the EEI filing, um, something along those lines. Um, but it is actual a customs entry process, which means a Mexican customs broker is required. Um, the amount of liability is not near as much on the uh, northbound side for the Mexican broker, but so we'll talk a little bit more about that when we start talking about southbound. Um, obviously, the trucking information is very, it's no different than if you're moving cargo from Kansas City to St. Louis uh, here in the U.S. So um, I did see a question pop up real quick. Someone asked what PGA stood for. PGA is the participating government agencies. Um, used to be called other government agencies, things like FDA, USDA, um, you have ATF, Fish and Wildlife, things like that. Mexico has similar type items on their side as well. So not only are you um, dealing with the U.S. government agencies, you're also dealing with the Mexican ones such as Sagarpa, which would be similar to our USDA. So prior to the um, prior to the border crossing, um, you will actually get the SCAT code of that border crossing agent will be provided to your U.S. broker. Um, we will do a U.S. Customs clearance. We will do on the Mexican side, we will also do the pedimento, and then you have what's called the COVE transmitted. The COVE, um, in simple terms, is basically an electronic copy of the commercial invoice sent to, um, sent to customs. So, oh, go ahead, Samuel. Yeah, sorry, uh, just to interrupt a little bit. Just the COVID, it's the electronic uh, transmission for the commercial invoice that we provide uh, the information directly into the Mexican government, which is the Mexican SAT. Go ahead. Correct. Okay, so um, once the DRE, so once that information is transmitted, um, we actually have the, the drayage piece or the border crossing itself. Um, a lot of you maybe don't realize a lot of your cargo that gets imported into the United States, uh, customs agent never sees the conveyance. They don't see the cargo um, coming north or south across the southern border. Every truck goes through a customs agent. So every truck goes through a booth and goes through, 
through that customs agent's uh, booth itself, which is something that's a little, a little bit more unique than let's say a um, motion freight or air freight coming into the US. Um, obviously, like we said, we have delivery to the US terminal and then the final delivery out. Um, a couple of points to note um, on the US side, obviously you need to have a power of attorney in place with your, your US broker. On the Mexican side, you need to have, um, your Mexican customer needs to have a power of attorney or your Mexican shipper needs to have a power of attorney in place with the uh, Mexican broker. So real quick, here's some of that documentation that's required. Um, you have the written authorization confirming that the broker can be the Mexican broker on the northbound, the Mexican POA. Um, this is where it gets a little bit more intense. Mexico's Articles of Incorporation, um, the company's registration with SAT, Mexico SAT is very similar to our IRS. Um, it's the same type thing, but there's a lot of information that here in the US that we don't file, but in Mexico about anything that we do from a customs perspective, not only does it bounce through customs, a lot of it goes through the SAT as well. Um, tax ID, and then additional information, which is the which is the power of attorney granted to the company's legal representative, um, and thank, things like that. So you'll, you'll see here, there's a lot more paperwork involved with setting up a Mexican customs broker rather than setting up a U.S. broker. Here in the U.S., we get a power of attorney. We do a couple of steps to vet to make sure that you are who you say you are. And then after that, we accept that and we go ahead and move forward. Mexico requires a lot more information. Um, and we'll, we can kind of talk about why that is now. Um, there, there's a question that relates to this as well. And it, it's that in the United States, the, the onus, the, the compliance risk falls on the importer of record. In Mexico, that is not the case. In Mexico, that compliance risk falls on the broker themselves. So that's something that's very different than what we get here in the U.S. And it's why you see a lot more information being required. That's why when we start talking about southbound, um, you know, there's some comments of sometimes my cargo takes a long time to cross the border. Um, you know, why does my cargo get unloaded from a truck? And there's a lot of that. And this is the main reason why. So as we get there, um, we can talk a little bit more about that. And Samuel can add some information as well from the Mexican customs perspective and kind of what that looks like. Uh, we also have this slide in Spanish. So if there's any questions or you would like to send this out to any of your shippers, um, feel free that you can send this as well. Um, I did notice someone um, asked a question just a moment ago about um, will they get a copy of this? Yes, you will get a copy of this um, presentation. So we did a quick talk, you know, U.S. importer, what information needs to be provided to the broker. Obviously the same stuff as if you have air freight or ocean freight, um, you know, the same basic information. So northbound is not overly complicated. The process goes pretty quick. Um, we don't run into the inspection process like we do on the southbound side. So cargo moving northbound across the border um, shouldn't feel or seem much different than your cargo that comes from Asia or Europe or Canada where cargo moves in. The only big difference on that northbound side is that there is an actual Mexican pedimento filed. Um, from a timing perspective, shouldn't slow you down any um, unless your your shipper doesn't is not set up with any specific broker and we can kind of talk about that in a minute. So